Sometimes on this journey, I get lost in my mistakes. What well, looks to me like weakness is a canvas for your strength. And my story isn't over, but my story's just begun. A failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. A failure won't define me, cause that's what my father does. not the end game or the journey's where you are and you never wanted perfect you just wanted my heart and the story isn't over if the story isn't good and failure's never final when the father's in the room no failure's never final when find hope love is on the move when father's in the room and prison doors fling wide and the dead come to life love is on the move when the father's in the room and miracles take place the cynical find faith and love is breaking through when Others in the room. Oh, the Jericho walls are quaking. Strongholds now shaking. And love is breaking through. church hope everyone is well some of you know me if you don't know me I'm I'm Laura's brother and I lead worship at my church I've led a few times with you guys but I just want to let you know my heart is with you this last week it's just been y'all have been a, 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 on my heart and uh, it's just been a burden. We've been praying for you guys and uh, hoping to come down soon and be able to do some kind of outreach. We love y'all so much, and we know y'all are going through a lot right now. Just know this morning, if you don't have a house anymore because the storm took it from you, there's always a place for you at the Father's, at the Father's house. There's always a home in the Father's home by his side under his wings he is so good and he is so loving and he's so faithful 
So I know many of you are going through very hard times right now. Maybe, maybe you've lost most of what you have on this earth or, or everything that you have on this earth. I just pray right now in the name of Jesus, that the Holy Spirit would be with you and would just uh, wrap, the Lord would just wrap his arms around you right now and you would, not, you would know that you're not alone in, your, in what you're going through. Lord Jesus, we thank you for another day. We just love you, God. We know that you're not done you're not done working, Lord, and, and the work is really just beginning. We thank you that you're not finished with us. You're not finished with Lake Charles, and you you have a mighty work for the people of Lake Charles to to accomplish and the people of uh, Vineyard Lake Charles to accomplish. Thank you, Lord. You are here, moving in a midst. I worship you. I worship you, you are here, you're working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, you are here, you're moving in the midst, I worship you. I worship you, you're out here, you're working in this place, I worship you, I worship you, for you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are. Yes, it is. You are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you are. Oh, you are way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God. That is who you are You are here You're touching every heart I worship you I worship you You are here You're healing every heart I worship you you. You are here. You're turning lives around. I worship you. I worship you. can't see him moving this morning, but I believe, I believe he's moving in the midst of our pain, and he's moving in the midst of destruction on this earth. When we look at it with our natural eyes, we just, we can't see a way, but he makes a way, he's making a way. He's forging a way through the path. He's creating a path through those trees. 
There's nothing too pop. There's nothing too strong. There's nothing that our God can't do. Our God is all powerful. There's no storm that's too powerful for him. There's no wind that's too strong for him. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, wherever you are, sing it out with me. Even when I don't see it, you're working. And even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I can't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. Making your declaration this morning. You never stop, even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I don't feel it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop working. You never stop, you never stop working. Even when I can't see it, you're working. Even when I don't see it, you're working. You never stop, you never stop. Oh, you never stop. You always make a miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness. My God, that is who you just I give this morning to you another Sunday morning and it's different Lord because everyone's separated right now because of the storm Lord everyone's on their own remind us Lord we're never alone we might feel lonely but we're never alone Lord Thank you for everything you're doing through this terrible situation, Lord. Thank you for everything you're going to continue to do and the testimonies that will come from it, the powerful testimonies that will come through it, and the lives that will be changed because of it, Lord. We thank you that you are faithful and you are always good. We thank you that you make a way where there seems like there is no way, Lord. We love you. Amen. Hey, good morning, church. I'm so thankful for my brother-in-law, Nathan, leading us in worship this morning. And I hope you're doing well. Look, I know it's been a crazy week. Madness is going on. But how appropriate was that series on Daniel that we went through? That we've got to have faith in the shakeups of life. That sometimes God will allow problems to come into our life to maybe inspect us, to correct us, to direct us, maybe protect us, or to perfect us in Him. There are all these different things that will happen in our life, and God uses them for our good. We just have to trust Him. But guys, look, God has been doing amazing things this past week. I just want to share a couple of them with you. You ever have those moments where you're like, there's no way that was a coincidence. Like that had to have been God. And and this week has been full of them. I remember on one day somebody called me up and said, Zach, look, my generator went out last night. 
it's a family of seven. I, we don't know what we're going to do. Uh, do you have anything? And I said, yeah, sure. I got one at the church. I can go and get you. Well, I go to the church and lo and behold, the generator is not there. And I just don't want to contact this person. I don't want to let them down. And so I remember like right after that, I'm just like, God, what am I going to do? Please, you got to do something here. And somebody calls me up and says, hey, Zach, look, I happen to have an extra generator with an electrician. Can I send them anywhere? I'm like, yes. And so I sent them to this person's house. I remember later that day uh, while we were at the church, somebody brought 30 hot meals to the church. It was at the end of the day. It's like, what am I going to do with 30 meals? And so I'm just walking around like, God, can you do something with this? And I get a random phone call from a person I don't even know. And they say, look, my husband is a fireman in the Grand Lake area. They've been getting neglected and they could really use some help. And I said, sure, what do you need? You need water, supplies, what is it? She was like, they could really use a hot meal. I was like, okay, well, how many do you need? She said, about 30. And it's like, no way. God, there's no way that was a coincidence. And I remember sometime that day as well, somebody said, you know, it'd be great if we had some maybe fresh produce, you know, fruits and veggies to, to give out. And I was like, sorry, I mean, we, we kind of, whatever people donate, that's what we have. Well, that night at like 10 o'clock, somebody calls me and says, look, I happen to have three trucks of produce. Would y'all be willing to take it? It's just amazing. I remember a church member also that night, they called me and said, Zach, I'm having car issues and, and can you help me out? And I was like, okay, I called some mechanics and they said, look, she'd be better off just bringing it to a, a dealership. And I said, okay, well, I'll check in with her, see how that goes. And I let her, I let her know the next morning she calls me, she says, Zach, you're not going to believe this. There was a dealership across the street from my hotel. I mean, these are things that are happening. It's like, God, you are moving right now if I just open my eyes. That very next day, I remember we ran out of cleaning supplies. Everything was, we just were run dry. And this random furniture truck just shows up. And it's like, man, I'm about to get some new furniture. But no, this lady gets out. She says, look, I know you don't know me, but uh, I have a truck full of cleaning supplies. Could y'all use that? And it's like, of course, that's exactly what we needed. I mean, God has been doing thing after thing after thing after thing. We just have to be seeking him. You know, I'm reminded of that story, and, and I think it's in Luke chapter 10, if I'm not mistaken, where Jesus is at Mary and Martha's house. And, and it says that Martha was going around all anxious, and she was serving Jesus, and, and she was frantic. And she was like, Jesus, tell my sister Mary to do something here. I'm busy serving you. I'm, I'm worried about all these guests, but I need you to, I need you to make her do something. And, and Jesus actually says this in Luke 10 and verse 41. He says, Martha, Martha. You are anxious and troubled about many things, but only one thing is necessary. And he's telling her, you need to be doing what Mary's doing right now. She's sitting at my feet. She's just dwelling on my words. She's just hoping in me because I'm the most important thing in her life, not anxiously doing all these things. So guys, look, I know we're anxious and we're troubled about our houses, about our community, about our church, but we can't let that worry, uh, worry us so much. We need to just be at Jesus' feet. And that's why we've been doing this three by three challenge. That's why I've been challenging you to pray three times a day for these three weeks so that we will just sit at Jesus' feet and know that he is the solution. He is the answer to all of our problems. I mean, when you, you look at the, the life of Jesus, he did amazing things, right? I mean, he was healing the sick. He was walking on water. He was feeding the thousands. He was doing all these great works. But something you always see about Jesus' life was he was always praying. Like he would, Jesus is praying again. Jesus goes off to pray in the distance. Jesus spent the whole night praying. You see these time, this time and time again where Jesus is praying to his father. And it wasn't like this ritualistic praying. And I don't want you to look at the three by three challenge that way. It was just something that he wanted to do. And so that's kind of where we pick up right after the Mary and Martha story. In chapter 11, it says this. Now, Jesus was praying in a certain place. Prayer was a part of Jesus' life, and it needs to be a part of our life as well. And it says, and when he finished praying, one of, the, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray as John taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, and then he went ahead and he taught them the Lord's Prayer. Okay, so he, he says, look, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And you know what's amazing about that, that, that prayer is that we, we grew up on that prayer. 
Many of us, we know that prayer. We've recited that prayer. We go to sporting events and we, we, we always say that before games. We, we, maybe we, we grew up in church where we always would recite that. But I don't know if, if Jesus necessarily meant for us just to recite that prayer day in and day out. If you notice, the disciples did not say, hey, teach us what to pray. They said, teach us how to pray. And right before, I mean, in Matthew 6, in Matthew 6, he teaches them that as well. He teaches them the Lord's Prayer. So if Jesus just meant us to recite the Lord's Prayer, then how come in Matthew 6 it's recorded differently than in Luke 11? Why, why did he write them differently? I mean, which one are we supposed to recite? Which one are we supposed to use? In, in Matthew 5, or I think it's in Matthew 5, maybe at the end of Matthew 6, uh, he, he says, look, don't just say these meaningless prayers. Don't just make it ritualistic like these Pharisees are doing. I, I don't think that Jesus intended the Lord's Prayer to be a ritual for us. No, he, he gave us a formula. He gave us a way to pray, how to pray. And he starts off by saying, our Father. Now, Father, in that day, they, they, they knew that God was a Father, but they looked at Him as the Father of the earth, the Father that created everything. But when Jesus used that word Father, He used it as Daddy. It, there was this intimacy. He says, you, when you do your prayer life, you need to start with an intimate manner before God. If I have to be honest, this is something I've always struggled with. I mean, there's something that I focus on in life is getting people to understand the holiness of God. To, to how he is just set apart and different. That moment that we see Jesus, it's going to completely blow our mind. But he starts off with this intimacy with the Father. He's saying, Dad. And I don't know, I mean, some of you, you might have a bad picture of your dad. You know, you, you might think of your dad and, and maybe it was a, a rough upbringing or you didn't even have a dad. And so when you hear the term, our Father, as referring to Daddy, it just brings up bad memories. That's not what Jesus was trying to show. I mean, I have a, a little girl, and I'm going to bring her into the shot right now. And, and this, is, this is my middle child here, Rosie, and she is just a sweetheart. Come see daddy girl. Come here, girl. And so look, 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 you, you, look at that right there. She's going to start crying right now because she's, but you see, you want to say anything? Say hello. You want mom? She wants mom. But here's the thing, is whenever you're praying, whenever you're praying, do you, have, do you have that kind of look? Not where the child's terrified of her dad right now. She just woke up from a nap. But I love that little girl. And I remember whenever she turned like, it was really whenever she turned about one and a half, two years old, there was just this relationship that we had with each other. And the same with my son. It's just there was nothing better on this planet. And, and there was nothing that that little girl can do. There's nothing wrong that my, my, my oldest can do that would ever change my love from them. I mean, they were so precious in my sight. And I remember for so much of my life, I tried to like earn God's respect or earn his forgiveness. But there's nothing that my kids could do to earn my respect. I love them regardless. And that is how God views you. He wants you to see him as a dad, to approach him as your father. There's so much security in your life when you know that our God, who dwells in unapproachable light, wants you to approach him as a father, as your dad. There's so much security in that. You know, and as we, fin we continue with that story, I just pick up my Bible here. It says this in the very next section. Jesus is just trying to give you encouragement to pray. Where he says, he says, I said to, the, I said to you, which of you who has a friend will go to him at, the, at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within. Do not bother me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. Jesus says, I tell you, though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of this guy's boldness, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And Jesus says, and I tell you, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives, and the one who seeks finds, and to the one who knocks it will be opened. And I think about that. I mean, try to imagine this for a second with me. Let's say tonight, at maybe you go to bed at midnight, right? And, and you're sitting there, and you're, you're sound asleep now, and it's one o'clock. You're, you're dreaming. It's, it's a great evening. All of a sudden, you hear this knock at your door. What, what is that sound? It, your wife's like kicking you like, hey, get up. Somebody's at the door and you, you hear it again. And then you hear, hey, it's Zach. And you're like, Zach? Like Zach from church? What is he doing in my house at one o'clock? 
and, and you're trying to process like what's going on, I say, I need some bread. It's like, Zach, the pastor, what drugs are he smoking right now? Like, what is he doing here in my house at one o'clock asking for some bread? But he's, what Jesus is saying here is that, look, if you saw, if I'm like, look, my friends are coming over and I didn't have anything to eat, so I was just looking for something, even though you didn't want to, you would still do it because you're like, man, if he's at my house at one o'clock, I'm still going to give it to him. And if a friend would do that for you, Jesus is saying, what do you think the God of heaven who is your dad would do for you. That's why he says, look, when you ask, ask me and I'll give it to you. He says, seek me and you will find me. What, what, what do they say in Jeremiah? When you seek me, you will find me. When you seek me with all of your heart, he says, knock and I'll open it up for you. Guys, we have got to get in the habit of praying to our father and seeking him. And especially in times like this. And then Jesus gives one last example. And I want to kind of end with this for you guys. Where he says this, he says, what father among you, if his son asks for a fish, will instead of a fish, give him a serpent, give him a snake? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then who are evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? So again, I want you to picture this with me for a second. I mean, to all the dads out there, even the moms, if, if your child ask you for some bread. How many of you would, I mean, like, I'll pick this up right here. I mean, how many of you, you would just pick up this snake right here? Now, this is not a real snake. It's just a wooden snake. But if this is a real snake, if your child was like, hey, I'm hungry, and you're like, well, eat this. Here's your bread right here. And, and you're like, take this. And you say, hey, you know, just die. And they throw the snake at them. How many parents would do that? Of course not. That's ridiculous. And, and that's what God is trying to say. He's like, look, if you being evil, know that you would never give a snake to your child if they're hungry, he's like, how much more do you think I would bless you? How much more do you think I would give you? I mean, so, so many of us, we have this, this evil picture of God sometimes. Like he's this man with a magnifying glass just looking to fry us, but he's trying to show you how intimate he wants to be with you, how this relationship that he desires to have with you. And, and it's like, he's saying, look, if you wouldn't throw a snake at your child, there's no way. That's why I want you to seek me. That's why I want you to find me. That's why I want you to knock so I can open that door for you, church. Guys, you are going through some struggles right now. Many of our houses, if you're anything like mine, your house is wrecked. But God's saying, look, I love you. Seek me and let me provide for you. Trust me. Know that I'm not going to do anything evil. I remember as a young Christian, I used, to be a, I used to be kind of afraid to commit all of my life to God because I was like, man, he's going to make me move to a foreign country. He's going to make me eat like bugs or something. It's like I'm going to be on an episode of Fear Factor. But that's not what God's like. He's like, trust me. I'm there for you. But at the same time, he wants the best for you. And so I'll give you like another example here. How many of you parents, if your child asks for candy, we're giving vegetables instead, right? And like at my house, every now and then, the, the family would say, hey, can we have Skittles or M&Ms for, for supper? And after I tell my wife no, it's like uh, we, we go on and we, I'm like, we got to eat some broccoli. We got to eat asparagus. We got to eat something good. And the kids, they don't want all that stuff. They don't want to eat these vegetables, but it's good for them. So I'm like, just scarf it down. I know you don't want this. I know you don't like this. I tried to make it the best I could, but this is going to be good for you. And so sometimes I give them vegetables instead of what they want. And God's doing the same thing sometimes for us, where we want the good things of life. We, we want these pleasures in life. And sometimes God says no. He says, here. Here's some vegetables instead. Here's some broccoli. Here's some spinach. Here's some asparagus, whatever it is. He says, look, I want the best for you. And right now, it seems like God has given us a plate full of vegetables, right? We were hoping for M&Ms. We were hoping for Skittles. We were hoping for Laffy Taffy. And he gave us a plate full of vegetables, raw. You know, it was a tough deal. But look, that's where, why we have to believe in Romans 8, 28. One of my cousins was just sharing that with me the other day. You know, that in all things, God works together for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So even in the storms of life and the literal storms of life, God is working that for your good. He says, look, just chew it, swallow it, and know that I'm working it for your good. Church, I love you. I am praying for you. And in anything, please reach out to us so we can pray with you and be alongside with you. But ultimately, seek him above all else, and he will provide.
I love you, church, and I'll talk to you soon.